Hey everybody, it's the interview queen Alicia Toot here and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to my interview with Miles Kennedy from Alterbridge. Hi. Hi, good to be here. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? I'm great. Really good. Thank Hi. you. How about, your, how about yourself? I'm doing really well. Psyched that you're on the show so I can't complain. Right. Cool. <laughs> I mean, Times are definitely different as this year has been an absolute roller coaster of a year for everyone. So when you weren't writing music, how was a lot of your downtime actually spent during the pandemic and especially the quarantine? Um, truth be told, it was almost completely filled with writing music and, and making a record. I wish I, wish I could say... Uh, that I became uh, an, an expert at something else. Like a lot of people, it seems like baking bread seems to be the uh, like sourdough in particular for some reason. Right. So, so <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, I thought I'd use the time and try and be productive. Uh, I don't like really much of anything other than music. I mean, that's what really floats my boat. So I figured, hey, let's write a record. Um, and also, we, we uh, Alter Bridge decided to do a, an EP, and uh, so we had that to focus on as well. So there was plenty of musical stuff floating around. We'll definitely dive into discussing the EP in a minute. But cool. I was curious before getting to the music aspect, if yourself and Mozart have been watching any Curb Your Enthusiasm recently. You know what? We actually watched... Uh, <laughs> An episode the other night. In fact, Mozart just came in here a second ago. Aww. I think he wanted to be in the interview. Just a little cameo. <laughs> yeah, um, and we did. We kind of. It's kind of our. It's kind of our. Um, our tradition here is to watch usually it, one episode a day, um, and uh, I mean it's classic. I, Larry David's a master. Yeah, he is the uh, social assassin. Like, that's hands down my favorite show of all time. So for you, what's a show you can literally watch over and over and just never get enough of? That's one uh, for sure. Another one that I can watch over and over is Mad Men. I can just okay. sit there. I can sit there and it's just such a well-written show. Um, it was such a, a unique show. And, and there's, there's something about it that really... Um, captivates me so i can and it's also like getting in a time machine going back to the you know late 50s early 60s and that's an era that i'm particularly fond of for some strange reason i don't, I don't know why but but I, yeah i love that show that's when everyone tells me they're captivated by and i've yet to get into it so maybe now this is like kind of rejig that thought in my head i'll have to check it out <laughs> now's the time give it a shot right. Well, it's an exciting time to actually be a fan of the band as Walk the Sky 2.0, uh, the EP, comes out very, very soon. So does it feel a little bizarre for you dropping a release like this in the middle of this worldwide pandemic? So it does kind of throw a spanner in the works in a few aspects. Yeah, you know, well, for us, because we were supposed to be out touring, um, and so that obviously got cut short. Um, so we're like, well, let's try and let's try and do something uh to keep us busy and also for the fans especially since we didn't get a hit a lot of the markets we were hoping to on tour so we thought well let's take some live recordings and of, of songs that are from the new record and let's um let's try and put out a, a, an ep and that way hopefully it'll kind of satiate our, our 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 base and and uh keep us out of trouble while doing so so um yeah, so that's what <laughs> that's how it's how that's how we're here. And you mentioned a lot of the live songs there, but there is actually a new track that was written for the EP called Last Rights, which you wrote during the uh, COVID nineteen lockdown. So, how did that kind of work exactly? If you were to bring fans behind the scenes, because of course not all of you are living in the same house yet alone uh, on the road together right now. So, uh, how did that kind of all go down? Yeah, so. That was a song, the genesis of it started when we were working on Walk the Sky, and we just felt like it didn't necessarily fit the, the rest of the, the body of work. It wasn't, it wasn't as congruent as we would have preferred. So um, we revisited it during this time. I, being clear across the country, they live in Florida and I live in Washington State, and um, so I got the, uh, the, the, the music bed and... and I had a different melody initially when I heard it, uh, it, you know, when we first started trying to put it together last year. 
and then um, I think just given the circumstances and 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 the crazy times we live in, I was inspired to take it in a totally different direction from my end. Mark had some things he wanted to readdress as a uh, guitar wise. Um, so yeah, it was it was one of those things that was done um, via technology, you know, via what you can do. I was <laughs> able to record it here in my my home studio and and send the stems off to Elvis to mix and uh, and it was cool because we were able to do it as I was tracking the vocal. He was j just like yourself right now. He was we were just like watching each other and he's like, hey, try you know try the chorus one more time and so it was it was kind of cool. I mean, I, I I'm kind of a tech junkie uh so i like seeing what the things we're able to do now with recording that we couldn't even have imagined doing 20 years ago so right. pretty cool and in all your years as a band of course it is better being in the room together i'd imagine but it is kind of nice being able to do something different that almost challenges yourself in a sense so that maybe could have been you know one of those rare silver linings in all of this craziness <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely when it does come to that new track, I immediately was like, as soon as I started playing it, probably within the first five seconds, like in headbanging mode, because that groove is just so cool. Um, and my takeaway from the song is genuinely how uncertain the future is and how we really don't know uh, what the future brings with everything that's going on right now. So was there a specific moment for you that sparked the track? I think lyrically, it was just, I'm a bit of a a news junkie unfortunately so it was just sitting there watching the television and everybody um you know weighing in with their opinions on things and how things were going and 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 so you take that and and then it manifests itself in the lyric so yeah i mean it's obviously very inspired by what's going on right now and it's it, what i like about it is it, it kind of looks at it from both angles it takes a word you know last rights it depends how you spell rights and every you know that that's a that's a very pol right now it's a very polarizing word in a in a sense so i thought it was interesting to explore that and um and i would i one of the things that personally when i listen to it and i think about the lyric is i don't feel like it's necessarily it's it's like has multiple points of view which as a songwriter that's what i always try to do and at least everyone who's listening to it, regardless of their point of view, there's a better chance that they'll relate to it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal. That's the goal for sure. Right. Well, something that is different about this record that we briefly touched on in the beginning is the fact that you won't be able to tour it, at least not for a little while. So if you were to kind of fill that void of live concerts that we're all missing so much, who is that one band that you would love to see live at the moment? Ooh, jeez. That's a really good question. Um, I, you know, to be honest with you, I was really looking forward to um, trying to catch Sturgill Simpson um, uh, on on this tour, um, and if, so he obviously his tour didn't uh, like the rest of us. Everybody had to shut down, so I was really wanting to see that. Um, so maybe when it's all said and done, I'll get to catch that eventually. Fingers crossed. We're all just missing it so much. So I couldn't right. imagine the fact that you actually are the one performing it. Uh, how deep down that must just hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's smart. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we were talking about stuff that you'd love to see now. So the last thing I would like to ask you about is the first concert that you actually ever attended. What, what was it? The very first. Okay. So the first concert I ever attended was with my mother when I was a child, it was the Boston Pops because we originally lived in Boston. So that was that was a big thing if you lived in Boston. But as far as rock concerts go, um, that would be, it was the first concert that came through Spokane where I live where I was, old, my parents considered me old enough to go. And and I was like, so I was 25. No, I'm joking. Um, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was, I just turned 15, I believe. Okay. So Sammy Hagar came through town, and this was before he was in in Van Halen. So this is a long time ago, and uh, so that was that was what kind of opened up the world of live concerts to me. And I remember sitting there just looking at the magnitude of it, all of the lights and the massive PA, and I was thinking to myself, I really, really, really want to do this. <laughs> This looks really cool. <laughs> That's amazing. I love how you kind of established there the first show you went to and then the like real first show. Cause I, I always do it the same way if anyone ever asks me that. The first one I went to, I was three and my mom took me to Spice Girls. But then like oh. my first right? 
great nice. first show. Um, but then the first actual concert, the way I always word it, uh, I was eight and went to see The Used and Blink-182 with Taking wow. Back Sunday. So uh, pretty good first concerts, I must say. That's pretty impressive. I got to say, that's pretty hip. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, The Used and Taking Back Sunday, pretty cool. I like it. Good show. Well, I do want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time and hopping on here. Like I mentioned before, um, this has been long overdue, so I'm really, really happy we were able to make it happen. Thank you so much for your time. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you, everyone watching. This has been Miles Kennedy from Alter Bridge. Be sure to check out alicia2.com for more exclusive interviews, and we will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.